first of all, the very basics. What is the tremor mechanism? How does the brain do it? Why does it do it in the context in which I teach TRE? Oh, I, I actually have a, a new kind of conceptualization I've been thinking. Oh, thank maybe, you. I, maybe I sent it to you. But if we go back and we think of all the trauma therapies that are having some effect, doing something good, there's a common principle. Oh, great. What is that? Well, it's the moving between implicit to explicit behaviors or implicit feelings to explicit behaviors. And TRE is actually a perfect example because what you're getting is the body to tremor, which is an implicit response, and you're containing it and explaining it and, in a sense, confining it with a verbalization and movement or they had control over it. So all the therapies, like let's take even somatic experiencing, uh, where they basically are going back and forth, the visceral feeling and reframe it with explicit terminology and words. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the same thing. And it, it's this, the reason the, the guys like it, I mean, this is really what you're saying, is that their internal feelings are not overwhelming them. They're experiencing the internal feelings, but they're being contained through a simple exercise. Part of what I'm now actually given your history and your actual uh, intellectual journey and your spiritual journey, I'm writing a paper on, uh, it's called uh, Vagal Pathways, Portals to Compassion. Wow. And it's really trying to deconstruct all the rituals. And the rituals were also, in sense, neural exercises of vagal regulation, but always done in a safe, quiet, supportive environment. So I think tree is as basic as it gets. So it gets people into this tremor, which it would only occur in really, really bad situations. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're basically experiencing it as like a roller coaster. It now is becoming contained and fun. And right. I think some will actually enjoy it. They talk about fun, right? Right, right. Why does the tremor mechanism activate, as example, when somebody gets nervous, they're going to go on stage and do a performance in front of yeah. people, they shake, or sometimes on the stage they shake, or they won't shake until afterwards. Mm -hmm. What's happening well, there? We have to go back and ask the question, when, when do people shiver? Right. Okay, so it's the protection of a core temperature, mm -hmm. which is now as basic as you're going to get. Right. What happens to people when they go into shock? Mm -hmm. Their body gets cold. Right. What happens when they come out of shock? They're shivering. Right. So it's a basically a, I would say, evolutionary ancient uh, reaction to try to protect the core. Mm -hmm. And when is it recruited? I think that's really the, the, the part of when you start. And I, have, I imagine, have you dealt with that in your book, The History of Shivering? Or? Yes, we did. We have a chapter on it um, from an anthropologist. Mm -hmm. And it's involuntary. And it has to deal with challenges to survival for the individual. Right. And in this case, it's now a shifting from the physical features of, of, of thermal regulation to what psychological features are mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. In a sense, shock. Right. And is the is that sh uh, shaking mechanism that's both used for a regulation of the body temperature and for this regulation of what we're using it for, the autonomic nervous system or so, is it the same mechanism? It, well, it's the same process because temperature regulation is about as core as you can get, right. like, uh, almost uh, uh, in terms of the autonomic nervous system. The the, it's, what, it's the thing that you have to hold on to. Right. So the autonomic nervous system through vasomotor activity, through constriction using the muscles, is going to try to protect core mm -hmm. temperature. Mm -hmm. So it is autonomic, but it's autonomic at a level of, it's very, very primitive. Right.